Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the RI Network podcast with me, Gavin Timms. Today is a little bit random. Uh, I am doing a pop-up coaching call. Uh, basically what that is, I've done them in the past. I literally go into one of our Facebook groups and say, hey, right, in 15 minutes, who wants a free coaching call? Uh, and then people will go, yeah, me. And then we'll go, right, here's the link and, and, and here we go. So we have right now uh, someone, a guest that I'm going to bring over. He is in one of our course groups. He's not in my coaching private group, but he is in one of the courses. Uh, so I'm going to bring him over. We're going to talk about what he's got going on, see if he needs help with anything. We don't really know what we're going to talk about yet. That is the beauty of this episode. So let me bring him over. Here he is. Uh, Robert Fendler, how are you, bud? I'm doing good. Good to see you, Gavin. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Let me get rid of that there. Uh, well, look, hey, I appreciate it. As I said when I posted this, this is random. I call this a, a pop-up coaching call. Um, I know that you, I know you from commenting on some of the stuff um, that that I do. Um, I know I just did a little podcast that you really like with Lou Brown. Um, so guys, check that out. And uh, I know you've been watching some of the other stuff, um, you know, from YouTube and, and the podcast and within the uh, within the group. So I appreciate you kind of stepping up or, or reaching out and going, yeah, let's do this. Um, so Robert, how are you? I'm doing well. Weather's uh, nice and wet. So it's what we need because all the fires that were up here. Uh, so the rain for the past couple of days has been really good for our area. Uh, okay. doing well staying busy uh real estate is exciting and what what area what where are you where are you located so we're in uh the north north part of california so we're about maybe uh an hour from the oregon border and about two and a half three hours north of sacramento got it okay <clears throat> awesome so california um yeah so yeah if you're getting some uh some wet weather there that's probably again as you just said i know you've had some crazy yeah. fires and um so i'm glad glad to hear that um so in terms of so that's where you're living um you've been following us for a while um uh you've been in the group for a while you've been following us you've been doing deals which is awesome uh literally taking massive action and uh you know following you know following the steps um so tell me kind of where are you doing deals? What do you got going on? Give us a background on you and what's happening and, and we'll kind of go from that. Sure, sure. So I've been doing a lot of uh, deals, subject twos. Uh, thanks to you and Joe, I did my very first sandwich lease option last year. Uh, that turned out to be really tremendous. Uh, I bought it um, as, or excuse me, I got it as a sandwich lease option. Uh, a friend of mine was leaving town we lived in a place called Alturas, California, which okay. is about two and a half hours east of us. Very small town, like 2,600 people. And I knew this guy and he was like, hey, I'm moving out of town. I just need to get rid of my house. I'll give it to you for what I owe on it. So I was like, okay. So it just so happened that I was going through your training with Joe in regards to sandwich lease options. So I put him into a sandwich lease option. I found a family of six. Uh, who really just, they didn't qualify right now to buy a house, but they really needed a big house. The house needed a lot of work. They said, we'll take a fixer upper. So I put yeah, them in that and um, they told me that uh, middle of this year, they said, you know what? We're not gonna be able to exercise our um, ability to uh, take the option right now. Can we get an extension? I said, well, let me think about it and work on that. And at the time I bought it for around 122 and because I need a lot of fixing up, I sold it to them for one, uh, the lease option was for 132. Okay. So because we were canceling the contract, I was able to come back with COVID and everything. The market is just soaring. Right. So, um, I went and the house was valued at like over 200,000. Wow. So, um, and I'm not a greedy person. I just want to help people. So yep. I turned around and I said, you know what? Um, I bought the house subject to from the owner. So I got, so I just converted it from a lease option to sub two. And yep. then I turned around and I said, Hey, how about if I carry the note for you and your family and, um, and you can start owning it today. And they were like, love it. It's great. So I told them, I said, the price is going to go up. I said, but, uh, I'll probably be able to save you on your monthly. So uh, 
I got uh, them to buy it now for 188. Beautiful. So I so I made an extra fifty thousand on the back end, and so they're buying it for one eighty eight, and um, their payments. I'm making roughly five hundred dollars a month cash flow off of that. Awesome. So how much did you drop that payment from the when the original lease option? Well, great question. So what happened was the lease option was twelve hundred, mm -hmm. and when they came to me, I wanted eight thousand for down payment right and they had two so okay. over 12 months they were paying me an extra 500 a month so Got they it. were used to paying me 1700 so when i factored it in i think they're only at like six or seven percent but um it's now like sixteen thousand. or excuse me not 16 uh, 1600 a month so Got i it. dropped it about 100 a month because they were used to paying me 1700 so nice. more than the the lease but less than what they were paying me overall i got it and, and obviously with the with the new amount of 188 i think you said what how are they about that were they all down because again you've solved that problem with them actually owning immediately so they were cool with that yeah because what i did was i gave them the eight thousand dollar credit because actually come uh, actually in august when we closed they had made their final down payment payment uh, right. the 500 so uh, I gave them full credit and I gave them uh, I told them in the lease option I was giving them I think it was $200 rent credit so I gave them all that credit because I knew I was making a bigger spread I could afford to you know lose a little by giving them the credit and making them feel like they were really accomplishing something great and they were I mean you know the husband uh, said to me, I work a lot with the wife. She's the one who kind of pretty much dictated how to do things. But the husband was like, when we got all done signing, he says, I just want to thank you so much because yeah. you're willing to help us when nobody else would. And, and is that not amazing? It is. It's amazing to feel that kind of, you yeah, know. It even gets me like, I yeah. get like goosebumps, you know, hairs standing yeah. up on my arms, you know. Yeah. And um, it's incredible because exactly everyone thinks it's about obviously money and you're in business to make money right sure. i mean you just did but again you've got a family that's in a house that couldn't qualify still for the loan that haven't made them monthly payments you got creative on the down payment where a lot would have turned them away but you let them in now not many investors would have took two thousand dollars down right with them doing a back of the six thousand over payments right not many people would have done that so you took a chance on a family so you've already done things that most even people in our, our industry in our creative ways would have gone for the more money down right, right. um so that's amazing in itself and again when you get that that like, that they're now owning their first home or their home as it as it stands where yeah. they've been making them payments and their monthly has gone down overall which is obviously which is huge so it's a win-win-win all around so absolutely good job fantastic you. on, on your behalf uh, you. and you're doing a deal in california where no one can do a deal apparently so um <laughs> that's awesome as well um, well well fortunately in that area i have about eight homes that i've acquired in alturas and like i said i mean when i first when i did my towns. first deal yeah when i did my first deal i was like there's no way i'm gonna get a deal my town is too small i need to go to the next nearest town which is where I'm living now, Reading, which is two and a half hours away. So it was a challenge to do the marketing and really seeing homes because back then when I started, virtual buying and selling wasn't the big hype or being taught a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Uh, you're exact, I mean, I've always been virtual, but you're exactly right. When COVID hit, virtual is now the new thing. And, and it was good. I guess I got lucky. Because I had, a, I already had a model that worked in COVID. I didn't know that until it happened, but literally I did. Everyone was virtually my team. Everything I do is virtual, so it was just a normal day at the office, right? Right. Where everyone else is scrambling and panicking. Um, so and now people see the virtual way. Now virtual is now the new norm. Yeah. Um, because people see that they had to make them changes that were weren't willing. That used to say, oh, you can't do this virtual. You have to be in person you have to do this 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 and it's like well no you don't and now they were forced to do that 
a lot of people have changed the uh, changed the tune on that. So awesome. So you've done that deal. That's fantastic. So now moving on, um, you've done eight in that area. What else have you got going on? Are you just located in that and you're focusing on the small towns there, or are you going in different different areas? Well, going in different areas now um, because of Joe and yourself. Uh, I was on the Facebook page and one of uh one of the people that signed up through joe's program had asked a question and i simply replied like you know many of us do many of your trainees or yeah or mentorees uh we you know give our feedback along with you know joe and you giving feedback to people's questions so this one guy reached out to me after my response and we just got to talking and eventually we created a uh partnership so now we actually have an LLC together and we, um, he's in Georgia. Okay. But, but we bought a house, our first house together in Mississippi. And so, nice. yeah, it was amazing. So he had found a house, got these motivated couple who unfortunately their son had passed away. I don't know how long ago, but so they wanted out of their house. They only owed about 30,000. So, uh, he promised them, I want to say it was like around 6,000 out of pocket for them to move out. And then uh, the remaining note was like 30,000, 30, 30 to 31,000, I think. So we took, bought the house sub two. Yep. Um, and then they stayed in the house. So I was like, uh, I knew I should have done that holdover agreement. So I was like, look, dude, you got to give them this holdover agreement. Yeah. Sent it to them. They signed it off, which was really good because they could have refused and just squatted. But yeah. um, but they were a really nice couple, and they signed it. And so basically, the the we paid them like half up front, for, and then we were going to give them the other half when they moved out. Well, because they took like a month and a half longer, uh, we had to, we got to pay them less to move out. Okay. So and now they're out now. Now they're out and we're doing a little bit of rehabbing because uh, the kitchen was a little bit of a mess and um, some of the flooring was just need a little bit of fixing up. So, and we're repainting the house, to, you know, doing the lipstick work. Yeah. And so, yep. and how are you running that virtual? virtual? Um, well, I've, uh, we contracted uh, with a contractor there and I've been working with him pretty regularly. Um, and so just talking with him and uh, he actually, my partner found him i guess he vetted him and so once we got going because i have the experience so this is his very first deal so he's yep. just learning off of my experiences and so i've been kind of along with everything you guys are training i'm mentoring him as well through the experiences i've had and yep. so this has really turned out to be a good experience excellent no that's great so are you guys doing um and this is awesome because uh, this is supposed to be a coaching call and it's turned more into an interview, but this is great stuff sure. because people are learning. Right. And that's the beauty. I have no idea what we're going to do when I get on these. So, um, <clears throat> with that contractor, so he found him, you're dealing with him. Um, are you getting any like picture updates? Are you paying him after the work's done? Are you paying him any upfront? Like, how are you, how, how are you doing that? Great question. So we, we, I sent him a contract that I had gotten through my mentor. And, uh, and so I wanted to let him know what was expected. He sent me his contract, gave us a breakdown of what, you know, he felt needed to be done. Um, and, uh, so we signed our contracts and, uh, so basically he gives me an update. We talk probably almost every other day on average. Sometimes it's a couple of days in a row. And then, you know, like obviously the weekends off, stuff like yeah. that. So we do keep in touch. He sent me a few pictures. Mostly he sent me before pictures like, oh, found a problem. Let's fix this. I give them the thumbs up and they go and fix it. Um, and then they're supposed to send me pictures afterwards of when it's all done. So fortunately, the kitchen, we were able to save some money on different things, but it just needed an upgrade, new countertops and the cabinets. Uh, the cabinet doors were all there, but they were all off for some reason. Okay. And so they just repainted them. Uh, I guess the owners have bought new hinges and doorknobs, but never put them back on. So fortunately, it saved us a lot of money, and he's taking care of that. 
um, and any other little things like buying paint. You know, I spoke with him, just happened to speak to him this morning. He's like, hey, I'm running out a little bit of paint. Tried to call you. I know we're like two hours difference. So he just went to the store and bought the paint, and I'll just pay it later. Okay. So, Where is this house in Mississippi? In a place called Meridian. Meridian. Is that near Jackson? Um, I'm not sure. It's in Lauderdale County. Okay. I do know that, but I'm not sure if Jackson's near there. Okay, we. I'm um, not familiar with the layout yet. I actually have uh, two houses in Mississippi. Okay, well that's awesome. That's the beauty of it. I mean, I done. I don't know how many houses in Birmingham, Alabama, and I've still only been there twice. Um, <laughs> but I'd done tons and never knew anything. And yeah. I actually couldn't believe when I went. I went out. We had three or four fl flips on the go, and I went to do some video content at the houses. Uh, the first time me being there and seeing them, and I couldn't believe how much sp how spread out it was. And I'd worked this market for three four years and i got there and i was like 25 minutes 30 minutes to the next house i was like wow this is these are all over the place so you don't realize like so i, I don't i don't blame you i think it's actually pretty good when you don't know <laughs> yeah. you're doing deals um one thing i will share in mississippi because i've done business there is it, it, they are renowned i think it's because it's clay based um that they have a lot of foundation issues hmm. i'm not saying all over mississippi but i so know jackson where we were um, a lot of places there uh, have foundation problems. So just watch out for that. Um, you. If you're taking them sub two, if you're taking them down, right, or whatever, um, foundation is a problem in Mississippi. So you definitely want to get that looked at. Yeah, well, he had happened to just mention that the doors, some of the bedroom doors weren't closing well. So he's going to go underneath just to make sure. And if he has to jack up an inch or so, half inch, just to make them work better. So, yeah, so I was familiar with not that much like you're talking about, yeah. but I was at least familiar with, yeah, sometimes foundation issues. We, how to we fix. had a low, we had, I won't say a load, at least six deals that we lost on foundation. <clears throat> wow. wow. And it was getting super frustrating. So, because sure. they were like, these are monster deals as well. I mean, we did some, I think we did, we did well over 100 grand on four or five deals in Mississippi. Um, which was great and we should have done way more and and the numbers look great but it was the foundation that was kind of killing us so again just just be mindful of that um and i'm not saying that that's all over mississippi but it's definitely where we were it was something to do with a clay base or something if i remember rightly so just um just just keep that keep that in mind so can i, can I, mean, I ask you a question real quick absolutely because you bring up a good point and how do you go about vetting contractors because you're doing it virtual you're not familiar with that area like when you first started alabama i imagine you probably had after a while you got some good contractors you like working with so you kept them you know through other homes but how did you start vetting contractors you know so that i can be aware as we're moving into like we're, yeah. we're start doing in tennessee and other places too i think it's it's definitely one of the hardest things uh we're we're you know, I talked about this before. I'm going to be doing another updated podcast on this. Um, we've got three right now that we're finishing off. Uh, and I have a business partner there who runs the jobs and the contractors. Um, so she does some of the vetting, but we did just get stitched up a little bit on on one of them that's been working with us for a while. So mm -hmm. I think it is a common, a common problem. Um, but I would uh, work for with referrals so if you like one that you like that delivers for you go off referrals of what they tell you so who do who do you recommend for paint if they do a good job and they're on top of it their referrals can go a long way so that's one thing i'd tell you the other thing is as well not only do you want and this is more positioning up, up front but not only do you want before pictures, but you want daily updated pictures. Mm. And you and, and if you position that as I, it's not that you don't believe them, but this is how you run it from a virtual. This is standard. This is how we do it. This is right. our process. So that's what you expect from the get go is huge, because what you'll find is people will say that they have done something when they haven't. Or they think someone else in their team has done it and they haven't. Or they're blatantly lying, thinking, I'll tell them I've done it. I need to run there this weekend and do it. And then it doesn't ever get done. Yeah. And then you start paying for things that don't. So I would say not wait for the job to get done, but pictures during the job. A 
okay which is Thank which you. is huge that's because good. that's one thing that we weren't doing and that would have saved us a lot of time because again you're paying for things that are being, you're being told are done and, and normally you know where we had a problem that we had a, a general contractor running the job and then things weren't getting done mm. so that was the issue so you're only as good as your team you're only as good as your gc your gc is subbing out and things aren't getting done you can see where it gets in a mess so obviously vetting uh, again so back to the question is to uh look at re you know referrals and and you're gonna have to unfortunately do if you're going into a new market uh i would probably if i'm going into tennessee this is what i would do is i would pull a list where my property is i'd pull a, a cash buyers list in that area I'd look at active uh, flippers in that area. Again, um, I use it, PropStream. If you go to propstreamgavin.com, you get a seven day free trial. If, if you already have PropStream, you look at the active flippers in the area, you call that realtor that's got the listing, all that cash buyer, and you just say, hey, I'm just picking up a property down the street from yours. If you don't mind, do you have anyone that you recommend to do any work on this property? Gotcha. And then they may say, as long as it's not their direct crew, because then they won't give it you. So sure. like if they're running a direct crew, but they're, oh yeah, I have a great handyman or I have a great painter, someone that I trust. He's done 50 houses for me. Okay, great. Who is that? Then you get that contact. Then you build on from there and go, you have this great painter. Hey, this came from a referral. We are going to need some paint work doing, but I'm actually looking for a drywall person. Do you know mm -hmm. anyone? Oh yeah, I have a great drywall person that I recommend. So that often through that referral base gets you a better quality uh for the most part so that's what i would try but again i'm not sitting here saying that we've had a, a fun run of it because it's been a nightmare sure um, but that's what i would do <clears throat> great well thank you i appreciate that yeah yeah so um you, you're looking at going to tennessee you you're in uh, mississippi you found a partner in georgia which i love because again i think partnerships are great uh, I do everything through partnerships and deal splits and everything. I just think yeah. it's the way that it should be done. Um, so that's really good. So how are you finding these deals and how are you marketing for these deals by going to one minute, got this guy in Georgia and we know came from the group, but now you're going to Mississippi. Mm. Well, what marketing did you get? Where did that deal come from? Uh, he got the lead. I don't know exactly how he's getting his leads. I know he uses PropStream. I know he uses... REI simple. Um, okay. I'm not exactly sure if he's scrubbing leads through Zillow uh, or where he's getting his leads. I think he was actually, I could be wrong, paying for some leads for a while. Um, yeah. So, but the first house he got through a lead, called him up and spoke to them. The second one we got was a wholesaler. And uh, the wholesaler, I want to say he. Gosh, how did I get a hold of him? I think I saw him on Facebook promoting through uh, the, we had gone on Mississippi's, you know, marketplace uh, for Meridian. And I think it was posted on the Facebook Meridian uh, classifieds. And so I reached out to him about the information. We got contacted um, and did a wholesale deal with him. That was up in a recreational area where they evidently, they do fishing like year round fishing oh, competitions wow. year round you're a big fisherman right absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> no but that sounds awesome are so you are you a big so, fisherman no <laughs> so here's how that deal worked out uh, you'll you'll really like this he negotiated now here's a kid i want to say he's 19 years old in college it was his first wholesale deal he's working with some mentors and he negotiated with the seller for, I think the house was 175, and then he wanted 5,000 for a wholesale deal. And, um, and he had negotiated uh, $300 a month and 15,000 down. So um, I went, looked at it and I said, hey, I said, I can't do 175, I'll do 170. And then we'll give him the five. And he was telling me some bad experiences. He had other investors calling, trying to, you know, work the seller down to like, I don't know, 140. And right. was only going to give him like 1500. And I said, no, 
said, you've done an amazing job. You really did a good job of getting all the information together. So I was like, I'm not going to shortchange it. So you're going to get the 5,000 and I know we're going to do more deals. I mean, yeah. and like I said, I mean, he's in college. This was huge for him. Yeah. So, oh, absolutely. so he got, grand. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, matter of fact, after we sent him the money, he talked to me a couple of days later and he says, I just want to thank you. I had a great steak dinner tonight. Oh, bless. That's How many awesome. college kids get a great steak dinner, steak you know? Dinner. <laughs> well, yeah, and, but, the, the, but the bigger thing is that you did there was you've now made him hungrier. What's he going to do the next yeah. time? He's just going to bring you more right. deals, yep. right? He's now you've got another mini partner in the deal and all of a sudden. So it sounds to me a lot of your marketing is the way that I was doing it before is through networking. Yeah, yes. Most of the time it's always networking. Uh back going back to california where i started um it was always just buying one house then buying another and then eventually my name started getting out around town i mean i was a pastor in the town so my name was already out there for being a pastor of a church but when they started hearing that i was buying houses and helping other people you know who couldn't get into a house people started calling me up whether it be to buy their house or to help them find a house and I would, you know, they would call me up and say, hey, do you have any houses for rent or for sale? Um, excuse me one second. No, you're good. That's right. Thanks. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so that took off. <clears throat> um, but it's always been about networking. So going yeah. back to that deal in Mississippi, he had negotiated with the seller for $300 a month, zero interest, over a seven-year period. So I said, I'll take that deal, but I only want to pay 170 and not 175. So we gave her the 15,000, um, gave her the 15,000. And actually she actually had a lien on the property for a little over four. So we paid her like 11 and we took the 4,000 and paid off the lien. <clears throat> and then, um, and I, I also put in the contract, wouldn't pay her 300 until December because we needed to do some updates. Nice. And she went for it. So we're paying her 300 at zero interest uh, starting in December uh, for seven years. And um, the house we got, like I said, at 170, paid him 5,000. And we're now getting ready to list it for around two, around 240. Beautiful. Amazing. And, and here's the thing again with creative deals, right? is that if you don't actually don't get and you just say hey i'm not making a payment and now if you're again solving the problem what people need to take and understand with creative deals deals in general is that you can only work with motivated people right, right. you can't turn non-motivated people into motivated people through creative finance it doesn't work they have a situation and your job is to get creative to solve the problem if you can do that you have a uh, you have a deal um, that that is do it is being able to be done right a deal that you can put together to solve their problem that works for everyone otherwise it doesn't work and I think a lot of people um, out there what they do is that they focus on on no mo motivation deals that they try and turn into motivated mo motivation so you got to flip that around you've got to go through your marketing go through your questions go through them four pillars of the situation the problem the motivation right is number one mm -hmm. going through the timeline <laughs> how quickly are they trying to do something going through the condition of the property and then the price and if you can find this information out then you can solve that problem and it's give and take saying hey we'll give you this price but we're not making payments of this or we'll take this price and we'll give you x payment per month and to be fair to the the kid who did the negotiation to start with right going in with no interest don't talk about interest if it's not being bought up right, right. a lot of people that get creative bring their own roadblocks to the table they create their own problems by over talking by using terminology that's not needed right by going oh how much do you want down or how much interest do you want me to pay no one's talked about money down no one's talked about interest but now you've come to mention it i want 20 grand down and i'll have six percent interest please that's a great way i not thought about that because i was about to do it for nothing down because you were going to solve my problem so 
Um, yes, that's 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 really really good. So you are networking. I called my company REI Network because I 100% believe in this, right? And you are now obviously moving deals and people are bringing you leads, which is genius because your overhead is low. You're working with already pre-motivated sellers, right? Which mm-hmm. is great, and you're getting deals done not only now just in California. What you're doing in multiple states, growing into other states. Um, so amazing, amazing, amazing. So good Thank job. You. Thank you. Um, yeah, I even have a house yeah. in Maryland that I got with my brother a couple of years back. So we carried that uh, as a rental. It was our first rental or my first yeah. rental. Um, yeah. He was a fix and flipper for years. He's been on HGTV. And so I finally convinced him, hey, I got an easier way to do it where we spend less money. So we ended up buying this house sub two. He wanted to do it as a rental. We did that for about a year and then we turned around and sold his owner finance. So, nice. um, so yeah, so it's, it's really fun. It's, it's not hard to do like you guys teach. It's really not hard to do. It's, it's as hard as you make it. If you yeah. make it fun, if you go out and you want to, my heart is always to help people. I mean, whether yeah. it be because I'm a pastor, but, even before I became a pastor, I've always wanted to help people, you know, to empower them, to encourage yeah. them. And by being able to go out there and say, I'm going to help this person. If they have a problem, you can solve it. But if they don't have a problem, like you said, you know, you can't turn unmotivated or a person who doesn't have a problem. You can't say, oh, by the way, you have a problem and I'll solve it for you. It's like, yeah, I don't exactly. have a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I learned and- a long time. Go ahead. No, 100%. I think you're exactly right. There's too many people in this industry that go in and go, how do I make money in this deal? How do I benefit from this deal? And it's completely wrong. If you solve the problem, you make money. Yeah, That's a given, right? If you're creating a win-win, both people win. If there's not a problem there, you can't create a problem because now you're being sleazy and salesy when they don't have a problem. Don't take a house sub two if it's not the right uh, the, the right thing to do, yeah. uh, you know? Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. For me, it's always been, you know, the, the profit is icing on the cake. So I go for the cake. If I go for the cake, then the icing is just that much sweeter. Uh, for yeah. me, I mean, you know, some people will relate that for me, I pray about everything. When I when I'm when I'm like trying to figure out how much to sell it for, uh, I can look at all the comps. And typically my heart has always been I want the buyer, my buyer to have some equity in the house, whether it be 1%, 10%, 20%. You know, like I said, with the one house that I got as a lease option, converted it. I mean, you know, the house is worth like 220 and I sold it to them for 188. So, I mean, they had a lot of good equity going into it and the value kept going up even after we closed. So they're happy to know that, you know, they could turn around and get a loan, you know, in a month if they wanted and have that much equity and, and ease at getting a loan because of the fact that, you know, somebody's going to, you know, a bank's going to look at that and go, well, the house worth 220 and you only want 160. Yeah. Done deal. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, it helps great. everybody. Helps everybody. That's, yeah. I love that. I love that. Well, um, Robert, thank you so much. Hopefully, uh, again, this turned more into an interview than a coaching call, but I appreciate you sharing things. I think the listeners are going to get a lot from this uh, in terms of, you know, JV and in terms of, you know, focusing on the seller, solving the problems, the money will come, um, you know, and they got to look at how you've still one solved that problem on that first deal. You renegotiated the deal to get an extra $50,000 while still leaving 30,000 in somebody else's pocket in terms of equity. um, And they were still raving fans and happy and, and couldn't thank you enough. Um, and that's what this business is all about, you know, using yeah. creative finance in the right way, doing the right thing. Um, so I just want to say great job and, and appreciate you. And, and thank you for, you know, following us and, uh, you know, interacting like you do in the group and on and on a lot of the stuff that I do as well on YouTube. So thank you for that as well. Uh, anything else you wanted before we're done? Any other last questions? Um, no, I just want to say thank you. I mean, between, you know, you and Joe, you guys have really uh, imparted a lot of good wisdom, uh, including today with uh, regards to how to work with contractors. Uh, it's something that I'm going to act on immediately. He was actually trying to call me while we were on this call. 
Um, okay, good. So I'm definitely going to use that. Uh, and I just can't thank you enough. I mean, just for this opportunity to to share as well as to gain a few gold nuggets today. Very invaluable. Yeah. Well, thank you. Tremendous. And Robert, if anyone's listening, and I've never asked you this before, so if you don't have anything, we can add it. But if you have an email you want to drop, or we can put it in the notes after if you want to get a separate email. Again, um, I don't want to uh, um, give your personal information away or anything like that. So if you have something, you can drop it or give it me after, and we can put in the show notes if sure. anyone wants to reach out, if anyone's got a deal uh, or something like that that you might be interested in. There might be some opportunity there for people. Sure. Yeah. I mean, the great thing is that through this, like we said, networking, I was able to get um, uh, through my other mentor. I uh, was at a training conference and we had talked. And so he's become my financier uh, for some of our deals. We've actually partnered 50 50 on some housing deals. Um, this last deal in Mississippi, instead of taking money in my pocket, he gave me the 20 grand we needed to close. And yeah. so he's getting 8% return. He's happy because we've been working together for probably the past uh, three, four years now. Um, yeah. So, and as far as, yeah, I mean, I have no problems uh, answering people's calls or, or helping them out. So, I mean, uh, I can send you my email. It's real easy. It's robert at kingdomhousing.co. And Robert can, at kingdomhousing. Yep. Houses, housing. 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 Com. Yep. Dot co. Dot co. Okay. Yep. Perfect. No yeah. Send me yeah. that. I'll put that in into the into the notes. Okay. Um. So yeah. Awesome. Uh. Robert. Again. Thank you so much. Uh. And if anyone, guys, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments. I know Robert is active on my channel, so he'll be able to get them as well. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're interested in working with me, go to reinetwork.com slash join. If you want to get involved in our group where we actually get deals done make things happen, change lives. Make sure you reach out. Let's go. And uh, Robert, again, thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you, Gavin. God bless. Bye.